All right, hello everyone. I'm Alpha Heavy Gamer back again with another Biggest Winners and Losers episode. In these videos, what I do is give you the highlights of the patch and then I rank order the nations according to how much love they got or didn't get from Gaijin in that particular update. But before we jump into the rankings, let's talk quickly about the new mechanics and maps. So Gaijin introduced a passive air tracking mechanic for the 2S38, the Puma, the BMD4, BMP2M, and the M3A3 that allows you to lock and track planes, helicopters, and drones. So now you get a lead indicator and, you know, for vehicles um, that are not the 2S38, you kind of have a poor man's uh, SPAA now. So I think that's pretty awesome. And we also got two new maps. So we got the Arctic map for combined battles and a Rocky Canyon map for air battles. There's also updated models for lots of different vehicles in the game. And there's some flamethrower mechanics now, and, and there's a lot more. All right, so let's jump into the details of the biggest winners and losers. All right, so for the number one spot, and it's almost a no-brainer here, it's gonna be Sweden as the biggest winner here. This tech tree got so much love this update because of the addition of the Finnish sub-tech tree. For ground, they got lots of low to mid-tier vehicles like the BT-42, which I know a lot of people were waiting for. You know, they got a Comet, they got T-54s, but towards the high end, um, they got the T-72M1, the Finnish T-72M1, the Leopard 2A4, and the Leopard 2A6 with DM-53 added. So in addition to the finished vehicles that were added, Sweden also got the T-80U, which Sweden evaluated um, you know, back in the day against some other MBTs, but that was added as a squadron vehicle. So overall, the Swedish top tier ground lineup just got some major reinforcements and it's looking pretty lethal. You now have three cutting edge 11.0 tanks with the, you know, the STRB-122A, the, uh, the 122B PLSS, and now you have the Leopard 2A6. But that's not all. Sweden did pick up a, a lot of Finnish aviation reinforcements as well. You know, from the BF 109G6 all the way up to the MiG 21 BIS. So, overall, in the Swedish aviation side, you have two 11.0 fighter jets in the tree now. So, you have the Vigan and you have the BIS. So, overall, you know, for ground and air, if you're looking at the Swedish tech tree now and you're a new player, this is looking pretty attractive, especially if you haven't, you know, ground out other tech trees yet. You get a diversity, um, you know, a diverse amount of vehicles in a Swedish tech tree from lots of different nations. And a lot of these vehicles are, are pretty meta. So um, Sweden number one looking pretty good. All right, so China coming up in the number two spot here. And Gaijin is continuing the trend of closing gaps in the Chinese tech tree. Every update, um, they get something and this one's no different. China got what is probably the most powerful SAM system in the game, which is the Tor M1. Its missiles have a 12 kilometer range and it's got a really good radar. At 11.0, the Tor M1 finally closes the air defense gap for China at top tier. So not so many additions for China this time, um, but they did get some quality additions. So on the aviation side, they got the Q5L, um, which is the latest version of the Q5 and it gets smart weapons, meaning um, it gets laser guided bombs. So the US is coming up in place number three here. They finally got another top tier MBT in the form of the M1A2 SEP with the Tusk package. This vehicle was highly anticipated for the reasons I talked about in the video in the top right right here, but it's such a good addition. The M1A2 SEP continues to deepen the bench for the US tech tree. On the aviation side of things, the only addition outside of the Battle Pass Reward A1H Sky Raider was the Greek uh, Apache Premium Helicopter. If you missed out on the uh, A64 Piton, this replacement is even better in my opinion. You get AM9Ls in addition to the Stinger missiles, which we all know are not very good. You also get laser guided rockets in addition to the Hellfire ATGMs. So you get a much more lethal helicopter, but it's still at 10.7 BR. And for any naval players out there, you get the USS Frank Knox, which is a premium, and you get the Tech Tree USS Fargo. All right, coming in number four here for the biggest winners is Russia. Russia got the sneakiest addition of all, I think, with the addition of the 2S38 
At 9.7, this SPAA slash light tank is, it's just pure evil. It's probably the most fun I've had with a GE Premium in a long time. You know, I did a video with my two cents on the 2S38 if you want to check that out. But uh, overall, the bottom line is I feel this vehicle is probably going to go up and be our 10.0 or 10.3. And of course, for naval, Russia also got two boats, the MPK PR-1331M, that's a, okay, and um, another one that I can't pronounce, the Bispolskini. They also got an airplane, the uh, A20G-30 Premium Bomber, pretty low tier. So uh, on to number five, which is Japan. Uh, so Japan is finally up in the winner's circle, and uh, although they didn't get really anything groundbreaking, they did get another 11.0 MBT which was the TKX, which is the Type 10 prototype. So good on Gaijin adding some depth to the bench for Japan. Now they have two lethal MBTs at 11.0 BR. So Japan finally did get another premium jet to replace the F-86 F-40 in the form of, wait for it, the T-2 premium. Yeah, it's not great, but it's something. And of course I couldn't leave out the ships. Japan got the legendary IGN Fuso this update. All right, so the last nation in the uh, biggest winners category is Israel coming in at number six. So uh, Gadjin decided to fill some more gaps for Israel. And um, I, you know, I think that's a pretty good thing. They got some much needed SPAA, the TCM 20 at 4.7, the ZSU 57.2 at 7.0, and the ZSU 23-4 at 8.0. So, I mean, not amazing SPAAs, but Israel really needed some um, some air defense in those slots, so um, good for them. All right, so moving over to the biggest losers category. So um, the loser category, higher numbers are better. So let's start off with number four because there's four in here, and that's going to be France. I put France here because even though they got the VAB Santal, which is a Mistral uh, Sam at 9.7, which does fill a gap, I feel France uh, should have gotten more. For example, the high tier light vehicles slash scout vehicle situation is pretty dire and there are so many options to fill these gaps. I don't know why, um, you know, patch after patch, you know, Gaijin does not give France high tier light vehicles that are actually good. All right, so coming up at number three is Britain. I feel Britain got very little attention this update, you know, outside of the, the flamethrower Churchill tank, that's a battle pass reward. and. Probably not all that effective, you know, the flamethrower. Um, but for the tech tree, all Britain got was the Bosvark uh, Spag at 4.7. While Britain, um, you know, they did have some low tier SPA gaps, um, but I think those are kind of filled. I'm glad Gaijin is still going after it, but just like France, um, they're kind of missing out on high tier light vehicles and scout vehicles for Britain because um, the situation isn't looking so hot. I think the Ajax can't come soon enough for Britain. All right, so number two here is Germany. And uh, Germany got the Schaff as well, only getting a low tier Spag, um, and they got a premium Folkwolf 190, and they got a boat, uh, the Hugen. So not much there for Germany. And uh, dead last here, number one biggest loser of the Fire Nice update is of course Italy. Um, they get the ultimate shaft again and get left crying in the corner. They got a uh, 1.3 BR tank destroyer and two boats, the RN Aquila, a low tier DD, and the premium RN Falaga, which is a 3.3 BR sub chaser. All right, guys, and that'll do it for this episode of Biggest Winners and Losers. Um, let me know what you think about the rank order and also let me know what you think about the Finnish sub tech tree. You think it was a value add for Sweden? Are you excited for Sweden? Are you grinding that tech tree now? Um, what do you guys think about all of the other additions, especially the Torum one for China? Pretty strong um, SAM system for the game and maybe, um, you know, uh, a predictor of things to come. All right. Thanks for checking out the video and I'll see you in the future. Uh, hit that like button if you liked it. And if you're not subscribed, um, consider subscribing. Thank you.